wants to know is ki tusi truck driver ban sakde ho ke nahi and the answer is hey guys this is going to be the most important video on this channel because this video will help you decide which country is best to study in whether it is uk us canada or australia what are the scopes after graduating part time salaries full time salaries general application process easier to find jobs and everything so let's get started but before starting with the video i want to let you guys know that this data has been collected from one of the top universities in the world that include georgia tech georgia state university purdue in us edinburgh in uk rmit in australia and ubc vancouver and ubc kelowna in canada Now starting with a part-time salary then Australia is the winner with starting salary of around $19 and you can even earn up to $3000 as a student that's best in any country and other countries are almost basic it could be like $8 to $15 in US i personally was able to make even 20 but that was exception because i got part-time internship but the general is going to be $8 to $15 as a student part-time jobs and uk it's a little bit low it's like 8 to 10 but most of the students i have seen they usually work on the ranges and now moving on in canada it's going to be around $11 to $16 an hour so uh, the first place is going to be australia second is going to be canada third is going to be us and fourth is going to be uk now moving on with next that is full time salaries so full time salaries ranges vary from the level of experience you have so let's say that us after your graduation you will get 3 years of work permit if you are a stem major like related to science and mba is considered non stem which is related to business so that's why students prefer to come only for stem majors so that's why i have crossed that non stem majors do not prefer to come to us because there are less chances of getting h1b visa with non stem as well so uh, you will get 3 years work permit with stem and uh, you can maybe earn around $60000 to around $90000 or even $100000 or even $120000 so this scale varies depending on what what field you choose now talking about computer science ranges for all of these streams i have seen that the starting or average salary is $86000 in us and uk it's $50000 actually 50000 euros to 75000 euros in uk then around 60 to 80000 dollars in australia and once again 60 to 90000 dollars in canada so that's the ranges i have been provided by the respective students Now moving on with scope of citizenship. So after you complete your degree, you will first of all get only three years in US. I want to repeat, and scope of citizenship is probably less because as an Indian, it takes around ten years in the best case scenario to around twenty years in the worst case scenario, or it could be even more than twenty years. Even some some theories, some some websites have predicted it could be like hundred and fifty years as well. But depending on what kind of job you work on, it could be like ten to twenty years in the average case scenario. And moving on with UK, the requirement is that as long as you find a job that pays you minimum twenty thousand eight hundred pounds, then you can work for that company. But you must not be self employed for example you cannot become uber driver in this case and you cannot become uber driver in us as well but here you can work anywhere you want to so now moving on with australia so you will be allowed to work as an international student from 18 months to 4 years and after this point you can definitely apply for pr citizenship and depending on your points yes they have point based system just like in canada so if you are like uh, if you are 18 to uh, 25 years old then th- there will there might be more points if you are unmarried then maybe there might be more points or if you have completed higher level degree then there might be more points so depending on those criteria you might be able to become citizen of australia in maybe 5 years to around 7 years that's like the average range for top degrees like computer science accounting these are like kind of top degrees that i have heard from students now moving on with canada it is pretty fast so because once you complete your degree you can actually work but once you work for one year in canada after your degree you can apply for pr and get pr actually so this is the fastest way to get pr if you choose canada so you can complete your degree let's say you complete your undergraduate degree in 4 years you work for 1 year and then you can get pr and then you're settled almost settled here and then citizenship in 2 or 3 more years so this is the fastest slowest is going to be us and in uk the average time to become a uk citizen is 6 and a half years to 8 years for most of the students that have been provided this data and uh, it could be even more 
more but average or if you if you have good salary if you are talented high skilled then it should be 6 to 9 years in uk so now tuition fee this is actually very difficult to provide you this data because i have seen students paying less in some country in some scenario and paying more in other country in some scenario but i would like to say that it's pretty much the same depending on how much scholarship you get so it could be like maybe 10 lakhs in us or maybe 20 lakhs in canada or it could be vice versa so the range i'm going to provide you that if you don't get the need blind scholarship or if you don't get the 100% scholarship it should be around 10 lakh rupees to around 25 rupees per annum uh, that's the average case scenario for undergrad degree in uh, all of these countries so the four year will be like 40 lakh rupees to 1 crore even 2 crore in some of the california universities in us so this should be the idea and now one of the most important step is application process so the easiest application process is for all of these universities except us because for most of the universities you are required to take gre for grad school SAT or ACT for undergrad universities and uh, IELTS TOEFL is required for pretty much all of them so four of these require either IELTS or TOEFL depending on the university i saw some australian university that said we do not accept IELTS or TOEFL or we only accept TOEFL so you have to check for all these countries and all of these universities So one thing I would also like to mention is the benefit of not taking SAT and ACT is you can focus on your boards and get scholarship even with your overall profile like how much volunteer work you did how many awards you got and the most most changing factor in getting into these universities is work experience for example that in your school you tutor a kid jaise ki agar ek bacche ko aap uh, math padhate ho apni university chahe free mein padhate ho but aap padhate ho that will be that will be very useful to gain work experience and that will make your profile outshine and you will definitely be able to get into that university and on the top on the, on the and on the top of that you might get some good scholarship so that's why you must try your best to gain work experience whether it is grad school or undergrad school So now the most important question that every Punjabi student, every Indian student, and every international student wants to know is कि तुसी truck driver बन सकते हो कि नहीं? And the answer is yes, you can become truck driver or Uber driver, but in only these two countries because other these two countries only allow you to work on those jobs that do not make you self-sufficient. For example, that that job has to be related to your major in us but this could be any job in uk you can work off campus jobs in uk as well but it should not make you self sufficient it could not be uber driver it could not be youtube it could not be chegg so that 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 is very important thing to consider for both of these countries but you can do startups in australia and canada you can become truck driver you can become uber driver you can uh, also uh, do other jobs like working at warehouse gas station and it's pretty flexible and you can work only up to 20 hours as a student but in your holidays you can work even up to 40 hours for all of these countries so the hours are pretty much same but where you can work that depends on country to country One more thing I would like to clarify regarding UK is you can become Uber driver as long as you're not self-employed. For example, if you're working for some company as an Uber driver or taxi driver or truck driver, so that's possible in UK. But that is difficult because you will have to work for someone else. But you can be self-employed in these two countries. And now the big conclusion I would like to make is that if I am in your shoes, then I would like to choose a university which has maximum job opportunities and which has the minimum tuition fee. So if I were you, I will explore all of these universities and I will check which university gave the maximum number of scholarship with your board exam score, with your IELTS overall profile, SAT, ACT, and do all my research and then find my perfect university because I think that tuition fee is the major cost and cost of living in all of these universities. and all of these countries is pretty much the same it's like $500 or even $300 to around $1000 per month matlab agar aap zyada log rahoge if more students will live together in one apartment then you will save more for example i am in living i'm living in living room some students even live like four people in two bedroom uh, apartment so they save a lot of money as well so depending on your scenarios depending on which city you live in it could be like $400 to around uh, $1000 per month for one student including of your living uh, housing utilities all of these costs 
And one stark reality that I would like to share is students no more prefer to study in UK. And the number one reason is they require really good English proficiency level. And many students reported to me that it was kind of difficult. It took almost on an average case scenario six months to find a good job. And another reason is that you save less money after you graduate. Let's say that you get a salary of 50,000 to 70,000 pounds in UK. And actually that doesn't pay that much of their loans because they are already paying 20,000 to 30,000 pounds on a yearly basis in UK and that is not sufficient to pay their loans because UK is a very very expensive country so that's why Australia Canada and US are the most preferred and also US is still the number one choice of the students because you save the maximum amount of money in IT field after graduating because the money you save in your pocket to pay back your loans is highest in US but once again it depends how much hard work you do and you can get those benefits in other countries as well but what I'm telling you is what studies have provided and what studies have proved in benefiting international students so that was the conclusion but remember that no matter which country you choose in you can get the best salary you can get the best job opportunities if you are high skill if you work hard if you aim for the stars then you will definitely reach the sky so that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one goodbye